Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome to my vegetable garden. Well, today is a special day because it's the first of my vegetable garden tours, which I'll do once a month through the growing season. That way you can see how the plants grow and also I'll throw in all sorts of tips along the way. Now today I'm going to give you sort of the layout of the garden, show you what's been planted so far, and then I also want to give you a little bit of an introduction to myself. Maybe we should do that first because you might be new to my videos or my YouTube channel. I write the garden columns for the Sunday edition of our local newspaper, The Spokesman Review. I've been doing that for I think about 15 years. I'm a Spokane County Master Gardener and have been one for almost 20 years. And I'm the author of the brand new book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook, which just came out a couple of weeks ago. We live on five acres in Spokane County, and we love raised bed gardening. So that is what you're going to be seeing a lot of. We have 27 raised beds, which is kind of crazy. We've been adding to the garden over the years, and we love to grow our own food. We do everything organically. So let me show you where things are, and then I'll show you what's been planted so far. From this vantage point, you can see most of the garden. On the right are two three foot by 16 foot raised beds for growing raspberries in. You can see in the background, I've got a small hoop house that fits over two raised beds. We use that for growing warm season crops that really like the heat during the summer months and then during the fall and winter months we grow all sorts of cold tolerant vegetables to give us salad greens through the winter. And then you can see some of the raised beds. You'll be seeing them more closely shortly. And also we're growing some things in grow bags in large containers. You'll notice some trellises which I'll talk about more in a moment. And then you can see the other row of beds here. We also have a small greenhouse that is six feet by eight feet. It was given to us by a neighbor many, many years ago and we just love it. Now let me show you the other part of the garden. Now you're looking to the south. We've got two rows of seedless blackberries. Love those. And then a long four foot by 16 foot long raised bed that will be growing corn in this year. Next to it is the broccoli, and again, you're going to be seeing this more closely. Two other raised beds, a small raised bed in the foreground, and behind it is a bed behind the greenhouse that we grow our asparagus, some artichokes, garlic, and chives in. I start nearly everything we grow from seed. And right now what I'm doing while I'm waiting for the danger of frost to pass in this region, which is usually mid-May, is I'm putting all of the seedlings through what's called hardening off. If you haven't done that, but in the past you've grown, say, tomatoes or beans from seed indoors, and you move them out into the garden for good, without putting them through this process, you probably have noticed that the leaves have turned white, and that is a plant's version of sunburn. It takes about a week to put plants through the hardening off process, and here's how it works. The first day you move your plants outdoors into an area with filtered light for an hour, and then you move them back indoors. The second day you're moving them out for two hours and moving them back inside. The third day it's three hours and then back inside. So you get the idea. This goes on for a week. And during that week's time, you are gradually exposing them to more and more sunlight and to the outdoor temperatures so that they can acclimate before being planted in the garden. That's because the intensity of the sun is so much greater than what you get with a grow light indoors. So this way I'm preventing problems with the leaves getting sunburned and any kind of added stress. So they will transplant like a dream. If you were looking in the background while I was talking, you probably noticed our coyote decoy and that is Wiley Coyote. So we initially bought him early last year as a way to keep the quail away from 
the newly sprouted seeds, which they love to nibble on, and other plantains that they can cause havoc with. Well, they were scared of him for maybe a week, if that, well, maybe two weeks. And then they decided, eh, he's just a decoy and he's our new best friend. But in the meantime, he has become the garden mascot. And we have neighbors that look every day to see where he is in the garden. One of our neighbors recently bought him a new bandana, as you can see. And anyway, he's just a fun addition to the garden. And I thought I better explain that right away because you're going to be wondering about it for the rest of the video. Okay, let's get to the garden tour. So this first bed has floating row cover over it. And if you're not familiar with it, it is a great way to prevent damaging pests from getting to certain types of vegetable plants. In this case, the bed is planted with beets and Swiss chard, and they are very susceptible to a horribly damaging pest called the leaf miner. The adult is a fly, it lays eggs on the leaves, the eggs hatch into little maggots, sorry, and they tunnel through the leaves, making them totally unappetizing. They do that for a few weeks, then they drop down into the soil, they pupate there, and then they emerge as an adult fly to begin the whole process all over again. By covering these plants, which do not need to be pollinated, with floating row cover, I can keep that adult fly away from the leaves, and so I've completely thwarted their whole life cycle. So beets, spinach, and Swiss chard all belong to the same plant family. They're all susceptible to leaf miners, and none of them have to be pollinated, so that's why I can use this for the whole season. So let's take a look underneath and see how they're doing. So this little part of the row here is for the Swiss chard, and we are crazy about beets, and so that's what everything else is. And they have germinated really well. What I need to do next is to thin them to about a three inch spacing for the beets so that the roots have room to develop. And I'm going to space these Swiss chard seedlings to a good six inches of spacing. But so far, so good. And I'm going to cover it right back over because I don't want any leaf miner flies to sneak in while I'm not looking. In this bed, we're growing torpedo onions that Bill started from seed. Those are narrower than the bulbing types and they're really tasty. So these guys are doing great. And then these plants that are growing down in a trench are Bulgarian giant leeks. The reason they're in a trench is because I want that nice white stem at the base of each one. And to do that, you prevent sunlight from hitting the stem as it grows up. And so what I'm doing is every time they put on a little growth, I'm filling more soil in around the plants to do that blanching as it's called. But the important thing to know is that you never want to fill in the soil above where a leaf is coming out of the main part of the plant because that can promote rot and you certainly don't want that to happen. But they're doing really great so far and by the end of the season this will be all filled in with really tall plants inside. You probably spotted this bed earlier in the video and have been wondering what it's all about. So what you're looking at is a covered raised bed and that is one of the DIY projects in the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. The idea is to have an easily accessed bed that is covered to keep damaging pests away from certain types of plants. And it can also provide a little bit of warmth either early in the season or late in the season. So let me open it up and you can see what's growing in there. Okay, here we go. Is that slick or what? So this is our lettuce bed. And if you've seen my older videos, you know that I started lettuce way earlier than usual indoors and then I moved them outdoors and I've been protecting them from frost. But you can see the plants are growing just beautifully and the main reason I have this cover on except for some frost protection early in the season is because again the quail 
and other types of birds like finches love to nibble on these lovely leaves. I can't blame them, but I don't appreciate it. So this way I can still grow them and not have to worry about the birds pecking the leaves. We have been eating salads for weeks now and they are such a joy. Before I move on, I did want to point out one other thing. So we use drip tape for our drip irrigation system. That's what this stuff is down here. But you might also notice these, there's three of them. And what Bill has done is he has installed three micro misters that are on a short stake. Because we have found that lettuce plants really like to have a lot of moisture. And so this really gives them the right amount of water. That has worked very well. Now if this were a very wet rainy spring, we could easily turn these off right at the micro misters. But I did want to explain why this was here in case some of you were wondering. Okay, I think we might be able to pick up the pace now. <laughs> so the next bed is the carrot bed. And you can see some spindly little plants there. They have had really good germination, so I'm very pleased about that. Once the seedlings are about three inches tall, I'm going to thin them so that there is about three inches of spacing in between each plant. That way the roots have enough room to develop really nicely. And I have bird netting over this one, again, to keep those pesky quail away. If you saw my video a couple of weeks back, you know these are my gutter peas. I started them in rain gutters and then transplanted them very easily a few weeks later. So the plants are doing great. They are climbing up this natural trellis that I made. And these are just pruned apple tree branches that I used for the supports. So these are doing great. If you're wondering about the floating row cover around the perimeter, again, I'm trying to keep the quail from coming in and pecking at the leaves because they really like pea leaves. Now, one thing I wanted to show you real quickly because I get a lot of comments on it is our toy snakes. <laughs> I've had a lot of people comment on videos saying, did you know that at three minutes and 40 seconds into your video, you had a snake right by your foot? Well, these are just dollar store snakes. And it's one more thing we use to keep the birds away from the plants. We just need to use them on plants that have a problem with birds, obviously. But I've got quite a few of them here and there in the garden, and it does work quite well. You can even sort of drape them inside a trellis, and that works well too. There we go. That'll freak them out. This is our garlic and shallot bed. Those tall plants that fill the majority of the bed are the garlic plants. And then the little short ones at the far right end are the shallots. We planted both of those crops last fall. That is typically what you do if you want to get a nice bulb from each one. When we planted them, we spaced them about six inches apart in both directions. We covered the bed with a thick mulch. In the spring, they started sprouting. And you can see they are doing great. So the timing on harvesting them is you wait until the lowest two leaves of the garlic plants have turned brown. And then you know it's safe to carefully dig them up and then move them somewhere that you can let those bulbs dry. This is yet another onion bed. <laughs> this is the year of the onions, I think. And those rather unsightly pinwheels are, again, to keep the quail away. And they do make a bit of noise when they're turning in the breeze, so that does help. All we're doing is waiting until the plants are large enough to fend for themselves, and then we can put those things away. Now we're in the second row of beds, and the one in the background is, yep, another onion bed. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> and the bed with all of the stakes in it has dahlia tubers growing in it, and I am very excited about that. I like the idea of having flowers in the vegetable garden because in addition to their beauty, they also will attract all sorts of beneficial insects like pollinators, and that's a very good thing. 
There's nothing else planted in the rest of the second row, but I wanted to point out our two trellises and let you know what we're going to grow on them. So this is what I like to call my famous bean arbor. That's because everybody goes nuts over this, and so I'm sharing this idea with you if you haven't seen it before. So this is a series of four individual trellises spaced a few inches apart, and they span this pathway between two raised beds. They are 14 inches deep each. They are seven and a half feet tall, but they have long spikes in them, so when you push those down in the soil, that makes them more like about six and a half feet tall, so that's not too bad. Of course, it helps that I'm tall. And they are 46 inches wide, and our pathways are three feet wide. So that means move it in five inches here, five inches here, and it fits perfectly. So I use this to grow my pole beans, specifically Musica pole beans. That's my favorite variety. And so I'm gonna plant them. They're going to go up and over the pathway and it provides lovely shade in the middle of the summer when it's so hot. The beans hang down on the inside so I get to stand in the shade while I'm harvesting them. How cool is that? I also will plant something, I'm not sure what yet, probably some basil on this bed, and then I'll put my celery crop in here. So this is awesome. I love having this type of a support, and I also think that going vertical adds a lot of interest to the garden. This is the other arbor I wanted to show you. We made it from two cattle panels or livestock panels. They are about 52 inches tall and 16 feet long, and what we did is we used ratcheting tie downs to hold them together while we put them into place and then these are sticks of rebar on the outside three on the outside of each side and that is to support it so i'm going to use these beds for growing winter squash that is of the smaller type and also pie pumpkins and it's a few cucumbers now that I think of it. So they are going to go up each side and it is going to be really cool. We've done that the last two years and I really love growing them that way. Next to that livestock panel arch, you'll notice there are those four big containers and those are extra places for us to plant some of our tomatoes. We love tomatoes and we really went overboard with planting seeds this year. <laughs> Here's the inside of our hoop house. It is 10 feet wide and 9 feet long. And if you're curious about how we built it, because this is something that Bill designed, you can go to my blog, susansinthegarden.com, and do a search on hoop house project. You'll see a supply list and there's even a video showing us putting it together. But what we're going to grow in here this year is melons because melons love nice warm soil and also sweet potatoes for the first time ever. I don't think a whole lot of people grow sweet potatoes in Washington state but this is something that Bill thought would be great fun to do. So we're taking advantage of the warmth of the hoop house. Now one thing I wanted to clarify is that there is a door in each end of the hoop house. And so we are going to open those doors to make it really easy for pollinators to get in. And for the first part of the season, we'll close those doors at night to keep the plants nice and toasty. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be great fun. In these next three beds, I'm going to be growing tomatoes. And the one that has some red plastic on it is a tomato mulch which increases the soil temperature and reflects a certain type of light into the plants, making them more productive. Now, I forgot to mention earlier that I recently shot a video that is called Plant Supports, and I highly recommend watching it because I explain how I'm using the support structures for the tomatoes and also what the red plastic mulch is all about. However, you'll notice that it's only on one bed because I'm conducting an experiment this year. I do not like using or advocating the use of extra plastic. 
And so I'm going to see if the plastic really makes a difference on the tomato production. I'm hoping, <laughs> obviously, that I'm not making a mistake by not using it on all three beds. But I really would like to get a good productivity this year without using plastic. So stay tuned for that. This next bed is going to have summer squash in it, but I don't have those planted yet because it's too early. We're close though. And then in the back bed, that's where I planted potatoes in a recent video. And we're growing them both in the bed and in those cloth grow bags and containers that I pointed out earlier. And most of the potatoes have sprouted, but we're still waiting on the Minnesota potatoes to come up. Last week I shot a video on planting this bed of broccoli and I also pointed out these hoops that are part of a DIY project in the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook so that I could put this tool or bridal veil netting over the plant. So the thing with broccoli and other members of the cabbage family is that they are very susceptible to pest damage in the form of aphids, slugs, and different types of cabbage worms. So this netting or a floating row cover will keep all of these bugs away from the plants. I can see them really easily so I know how well they're doing and it works great. So the DIY project is for making your own pipe bender so that you can make metal hoops out of EMT, which is electrical metal tubing. And then we also have a project that is for making hoops from black plastic poly sprinkler pipe. And here you can see the plants a little bit better. The other thing I like about using this bridal veil netting is that it gives much better airflow than the floating row cover. And because broccoli and other cabbage family crops are cool season crops, that means they really benefit from that good air circulation. This next bed is where Bill's going to plant his peppers. If you're not familiar with my videos, you probably don't know that he is an expert on growing peppers. And so this is the bed he is going to take over this year to grow them. And yes, one more bed of onions. If it's more than we can eat, we'll definitely share them with our local food bank. But yeah, I got a great deal on onion sets and so they are planted everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the first vegetable garden tour of the season. I hope you enjoyed it and picked up some interesting tips along the way. Wiley and I say thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week.